Hi, this is Rick Davis from On the Chairlift, and we are pretty excited to be here at the Scutney Ski Area where they're actually taking down a high-speed quad. And with us today, all the way from Montana, Montana Whitefish, Montana, is Mark Hazelby with SkyTrack. Mark, thanks for taking the time out. I know you guys are busy and on a pretty tight schedule. What's uh, What was the first thing uh, you, you thought about doing here? Was it taking the cable down? Yeah, that's the first thing is to take the cable off. And the priority is to get ready for the helicopter, which will be here Friday. And so when the, the copter gets here, what's the first thing they do? Well, we'll start at the top and uh, start taking the cross arms off the towers and the towers down. We have some that we can fly complete, but some we can't because of the weight restrictions. Now the cross arms one by one? Yeah, yep. We'll fly one off and then we'll fly the tower and then we'll fly the cross arm or it may, maybe we fly all the cross arms and then come back and do the towers, it depends. So. And bring them down to the parking lot? for Yeah, this lower lot here is where they all get staged. And they get loaded on a, on a flatbed? Yep, uh, we'll load them up on a truck after we break them down a little bit and make them easier so we can fit more on a truck. And then they go over to Crotchet Mountain to be reassembled for a new high-speed quad there. And you've already got the cable done. How long did that take? Actually, uh, once we got all set up and everything running, it took us a day. So. And did you turn the, the lift on and just reel it like that? Or no, you... no. The lift, uh, the bull wheel up top turned, of course, but uh, nothing down here was turning at all. So, so you had a machine to actually roll, uh, reel yeah. in the cable? Yep. We had a, what we call a spooling machine that had a big chain around it and a sprocket, and that wound it up. And it's all... We have pictures of that. It's on the reel now. Yeah, there's 10,000 feet. There's 40,000 pounds worth of cable there. So. Amazing. Okay, so the helicopter comes and you just unbolt everything? Well, we prep it all. We make sure the bolts aren't tight and rusted because and, every minute counts with the helicopter. It's very expensive, so we try to make it efficient as we can. What kind of a helicopter is it's, it? Uh, it's a Korsky 61. Is it a sky crane, what they call a sky crane? No, that's a 53, but this is a, we, they nickname them the flying school bus because they're a large bodied helicopter. So with any luck, you'll reassemble in the parking lot, ready to load on the flatbed. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got the two uh, tower, the two uh, engine, or actually the top, what do you call the top thing? The top is a tension terminal. That's where the hydraulics are to pull tension on the cable. And the bottom terminal here is what we refer to as the drive terminal. It's where it powers the lift. And how long will it take to take those two down? Uh, it could take a couple weeks apiece to take those down. The top one is the more difficult one, of course, just because of access. Right. Uh, what about when you get... Uh, now, this lift is going to Crotchet Mountain in Barrington, New Hampshire? Uh, Bennington. Bennington, New Hampshire. We have a Bennington, Vermont. Okay. And once it's, And you'll try to assemble as much as you can at a site there at the ski area? Well, yeah, I mean, there's a, it's quite a process. You gotta survey and dig the foundations, pour all the concrete. Uh, then once all the concrete's in the ground and done, then we can start standing the steel on the foundations. And Is there blueprints for this whole lift? Oh yeah, yeah, it's a completely, it'll be re-engineered for that site over there. But, you know, we'll use all the same components, obviously. And so what uh, time frame do you have once you're down at Crotchet? Well, as uh, soon as possible, we like to get everything over there, and then we need to put the foundations in. So there's quite a bit of work yet. And, and where do you go after here? What job do you do? Oh, that's hard to say. We've got a couple other projects, one down in Bryce in Virginia. We've got one in Minneapolis, a little ski area there. We've got one in Utah. And this one, so. So you travel on the road how many months a year? Uh, well, it's been as much as 10 months a year, but uh, I try to keep it down for my family's sake to six or seven if I can. So. Okay. Uh, we'll just talk. I want to ask you one more question, and we're doing uh, some uh, interviews and some gathering information on artificial skiing, dry slopes. I've, I've skied the one in Scotland in Edinburgh, and that was one of the biggest ones. Now there's a new uh, surface called Snowflex. Are you familiar with the artificial slopes? You know, I really am not familiar at all, never. I've seen it on the ski jump in Utah that they use in the summer, and that's, that's the only place I've ever seen it. So. 
we thought maybe here it would be a, a great place for an artificial slope, but. Perhaps it would be. Yeah. Okay, uh, anything else that we can think of that we didn't cover? I mean. Uh, not really. I mean, there's, it's quite a process to take down a lift and reinstall it. And this is, this place is rugged access. So it's, that adds to the challenge. Yeah. Okay, Mark, all the way from uh, Montana. Montana. Thank you, sir. Good luck to you. Thank you. This is Rick Davis on the chairlift right here at the Scutney uh, ski area where they're taking down the high speed quad. See you soon. Thank you. Hello. Hi, it's Rick Davis again from On the Chairlift. This is part two of our little interview we're doing on the removal of the high speed quad here at the Scutney Ski Area. And with me right now, we have uh, John Rodenheiser from New Ipswich, New Hampshire. And John, you work for Crotchet? Yes, I do. Crotchet Mountain, how long have you worked there? Uh, going on five years now. So. Great. Well, that, you, you must be excited down there getting a, a high speed quad. Yeah. Um, it's going to help open up the top of the mountain finally again. Um, since they reopened, it's just been accessed by hiking. A um, few more trails, a uh, bunch more acreage, and it's going to be a nice addition. Finally get it all open. And Crotchet Mountain is in Bennington, New Hampshire? Yeah, Bennington, New Hampshire. Southern New Hampshire. And what big city, how far from Nashua? Or oh, Nashua, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on traffic. What's the know. closest big city that we would know? Probably, Portsmouth? no, that's on the coast, uh, Merrimack or Peterborough. Peterborough, very, very close. okay. How far is Gunstock from you? They're north, that's a ways, um, that couple hours. Okay, and how long has uh, Crotchet Mountain been in, in existence? Oh, I used to ski there when I was a kid, so I mean, it was open in the 70s, I know that much, so before that, it was two separate ski areas, Onset and Bobcat. One of them turned into Crotchet, bought out the other one, connected the two, and it was a really neat place then. Um, they went bankrupt, um, and then they finally reopened, but only on one side. So hopefully maybe in the future. That's great trivia, Onset and Bobcat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one skier is on one side of the mountain, and one was on the other? Yes, and they just connected the two with some crossover trails, and. Uh, easily doubled up the area. But. Excellent. We love, uh, we love that site, uh, lost ski areas of Vermont, New Hampshire, and we're afraid that Escutney might become a lost ski area of Vermont. Hopefully not. But yeah, hopefully not. So what is your job with uh, a crotchet? Um, one of the lift mechanics. Also buildings and grounds, snowmaking, what they need to have done, but mainly the mechanic. Thing. Excellent. Well, thank you for taking the time out. You guys, I know, are wicked busy and and good luck to you. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Go Crotchet Mountain. Thanks. This is Rick Davis from the chairlift. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you all soon. Think snow.